What's up everyone, Dr. Bo here, and today I'm answering your questions about elbow pain. How can I help you today? Dear Dr. Bo, what do I do about the outside of my forearm near my elbow hurting when I go to lift in the gym. Anytime that I'm gripping weight, doing pull-ups, doing rows or lat pull-downs, the outside portion of my elbow hurts. All right, let's talk about this common thing called tennis elbow. Now, before you start saying, well, wait a second, Bo, didn't he just say he was at the gym, so this isn't a tennis <laughs> actual injury, you're 100% right. But for all namesake aside, they call this tennis elbow. And really what it means is this. It means that the muscles on the outside portion of your arm right here that insert to this bone right here called your radial head become tightened and stiff and it starts to pull off. And that causes what we are using the term tennis elbow or in our doctor world, we call it lateral epicondylitis. But the big thing is, is what do I do about it? All right, so I'm gonna give you guys the exact formula that I use in my practice with my patients who are dealing with tennis elbow. Now, before we get started, please know this. In the elbow, there's actually two different type of ailments that commonly occur. One of them is called tennis elbow, which is on the outside portion of the arm. The second one is called golfer's elbow, and that's on the inside portion of the arm. And the reason that they call it tennis elbow is because it's commonly seen with people who play tennis that do backhand, like if the racket's on this side, they backhand the ball and it causes an inflammation of these muscles right over the outside portion of the elbow. Okay, so the thing to know about tennis elbow is this. Inflammation is our worst enemy. That's right. Anytime that the tendons and the muscles that surround that elbow become very, very inflamed, they become tight, they become spastic, and they can actually rip and pull off that portion of that radial head, and that is not a good thing. So what I want to do is give you guys all of the tips and strategies that I would tell my patients to do having to do with tennis elbow. So if you are a patient, you came in my practice, we just diagnosed you with tennis elbow, here's exactly what we're gonna do. The first thing is, is that the muscles are always tight and stiff, so we wanna do things that help to relax the muscle. So the first thing that I do is I will use electrical stim like a tens unit over the tops of those muscles for about five minutes and I put an ice pack over the top of them and ultimately I just want to get the tens to get the muscles to relax a little bit after about five minutes or so I pull out my handy dandy cupping sets I have a whole bunch of stuff over here that I'm gonna show you guys so these are called rock pods these are a silicone uh, based uh, cupping set I like them they come in different sizes or what have you and I use them by pushing down and putting them over the different areas all over the elbow. And I leave them there for about three to four minutes. Matter of fact, that is what they call static cupping. After it is on the skin for three or four minutes, what I will do, and I'll try to do it here, is if the cup's here, I will then take the other hand and I will take the hand through different ranges of motion. So the doctor will take it. So this is not me doing it. It's the doctor or you doing your other hand, trying to loosen up the fascia. That's basically the stuff that sits on top of the muscle uh, below the skin. And we're trying to get this cup to slide back and forth and to glide. Matter of fact, we're trying to create some friction, so to speak, around the fascia. You can also take it and pull back and forth yourself over these cups. Now this isn't shouldn't cause any pain, it just causes movement of the fascia and the muscles. So number one, we tensed it. Number two, we did, we did static cupping. Number three, we did this sort of active cupping. The fourth thing that I like to do is I like to use Graston technique or some type of skin irritating technique. So this is a uh, myogrip. And what I do is I put some lotion on the skin here and I take this and I go back and forth over the different muscles. Again, this is more of a fascial scraping technique. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get 
all of those adhesions to break up all around that radial head. So I go on the front side, the back side, sometimes I'll even go on the, the top portion of the elbow there, and we're trying to create some movement in those muscles and on that fascia. All right, so, so far we've tensed it, we've cupped it, we've active cupped it, we've grasped it or whatever you wanna call that, you know, uh, skin irritant. The fourth thing that I do is then I adjust it. And guys, I can't show you guys how to do this. This is obviously uh, for a chiropractor or someone that knows how to manipulate the radial head. But typically we see the radial head go uh, posterior, so we adjust it anterior and we get that thing back into the right alignment. And then the last thing that I do is I always use some kinesio tape right over the top of the actual radial head into the forearm muscles down here. And then I'll leave it for the next few days. I'll tell the patient to apply ice and to do some very light stretching. Now, beyond that, if it gets really bad, you can actually uh, apply a brace, a forearm brace that goes around here. And the whole idea with the brace is if the muscles are lifting up, you use the brace this way to hold the muscles down and it changes the fulcrum, so to speak, as far as when you're using your forearm. Now, the last thing I'll say is this, is that if you are experiencing this while you're working out, the thing that you wanna do is you must modify the type of workout that you're doing and or the type of way you are holding the weight. Now, for sake being, I'm gonna use this and call this a weight. And what we typically do is if we're picking up a dumbbell is we hold the weight like this, right? If we're doing like a bench press with a barbell or we're holding a dumbbell and we're doing curls. All I ask that you do is you take your thumb and you move it to the outside portion of the weight. So if you're doing a bench press, you're holding it and pressing up this way with your thumb on the outside. And if you're doing like a hammer curl or what have you, you're doing it so you're not wrapping your thumb around it. What that will allow your body to do is not engage these muscles right here. And those are ones, guys, that cause inflammation. We typically see this when people are doing really heavy sets of like hammer dumbbell curls or also when they're doing a lot of like uh, pull-ups and stuff or really gripping tight. So if you're doing pull-ups, don't grip this way, take your thumb and put it on the outside portion of the bar and do your pull-ups that way. All right guys, I hope this helps to answer your guys' questions. Thank you so much for asking me this question here. And if you guys have questions about lateral epicondylitis, tennis elbow pain, please, Drop me a letter, drop me a note down below in the comments, what have you. I will do my best to answer them. As always, guys, take it easy. Bye now.